Good morning, welcome to church, and happy Mother's Day to all there. Um, the first song we'll start with, and by the way, we will have communion at the end today, so we'll do uh, short and sweet, because I know quite a few of us have to get out of here um, before too long after 10, so... Uh, the first hymn we'll go with is 588, In the Garden, all the verses, yeah. all three verses. Before we have prayer, is there any others we need to um, list on our re prayer request? If not, then um, we will go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come unto you today again as your children, as we seek your word, the love that you have passed on to us the love that you've given unto all the mothers that they see fit to your, their children as you see fit to your children. You take care of us as we move forward, as we learn of your word and we learn of your love. And what greater love that you had for us than Christ on the cross, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, the love that you've given unto us for his righteousness was put onto us once we believe and that we can come to your perfect home, your perfect mansion in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for all of this that you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Um, the second one will be uh, page 101, uh, Haven of Rest. All three verses.
Uh, their next song will be from the handout, uh, Supper Time. Do you want to do all three? Yeah. All three verses. Announcements today. Um, just had to write the deal there. Uh, we did receive the the new permit for the camp. Uh, I forgot to look. Did you have to look at it? I'm not sure how long we have. <laughs> I forgot to look at how long, what the length was. But I know we have it. So it all, all we just do, need to do now is uh, meet and sign. So we have it for this year. I would say a minimum of five. Well, I'll have to check for sure, maybe 10. But I, I'm, I'm pretty positive we have it for another five years. So with that said, we only have eight weeks left till we're there, which <laughs> is going fast. Um, I've, I've been spending so much time on trying to get this permit done that I haven't had a lot of time to get into everything else. So it'll probably be a while before that would be done. Uh, it'll, yeah. Uh, maybe by the end of the month we'll see what happens here. If we don't have any catastrophes like we had the last couple of years, <laughs> who knows? We plug one hole and we get two more, so... But anyways, um, we're, we're moving forward there. Um, 
senior counselors, have you pretty much got a hold of everybody? Okay, we're, pr we're pretty well. In okay, so we're pretty well set up there. Yeah, I know we were doing, doing quite um, well with that. Um, as always, we ha always have a bunch of girls <laughs> compared to the boys, but we do have a decent, um, a really good crew of senior counselors again. And of course, we're starting to move more up. Um, so we were going to have a meeting today, but with Mother's Day, I th we'll push it back a week. Maybe next week we'll get into it and get discussing, um, get more into everything. I know this year, um, the um, just to cap uh, our our health license that's done. I've got that in hand already. Our um, insurance is taken care of out there. That's in hand. Um, basically, now is just opening up and start um, start going with that. And then uh, camp should be, hopefully we'll have it up and full bore ready to go by July uh, 9th. The 8th we'll have the senior counselors in, figure out what we'll feed them that night. Um, and it should be an exciting year. I mean, it's been uh, every year. So we got the camp all taken care of. Um, I talked with Chris Brown Wednesday, and he is looking at later this month that they will be moving in here to do the shingles on the church. He said sometime at, towards the end of the month here. And at that time, I'm gonna approach him about doing some work out at the camp and see if we can get the mess hall done. We'll take care of that. Uh, for this year, then a couple of buildings need to be painted, and we should have that pretty well wrapped up. Um, if you hadn't heard, we'll probably do, we're going to do communion since we missed it last week. We'll do communion at the end of the day today. Um, as far tomorrow night, ladies' Bible study here at the church, five o'clock. Um, I haven't heard from Kelly if she ordered those books or not. Okay. Yeah. We'll get it taken care of. So. Um, so the only thing I have left, and Miss Carol give that to me this morning for the church, is one of our superb campers and counselors is graduating this year. And she's inviting us out to her graduation. It's Miss um, Miss Madison Tentrup, Maddie Tentrup. And on here it says, uh, uh, class of 2022, Big Fork High School, please join us for a graduation party June 4th, 2022 at one, from one to five at Maddie's house. And the address is here. Um, it says to RSVP by the 7th, which was yesterday, but um, talking with Carol, I know we always try to, you know, especially the, our gracious kids that we have at camp, we usually always try to set, um, show up at theirs. So if you know of anybody else that's graduating that's been from the camp, let us know because we definitely want to, you know, show up there and um, just to give them good luck. You know, I know she's going on to UND in Grand Forks, right, Carol? Yes. Well, that'll be good. So the new chapter in her life is going, and we'll go from there. I think that's all. Is there any other announcements, Mike, Rachel, anybody, Tom, Barb, nobody? Chris, did I miss anything? I have to check with Chris, because if I miss anything, I'll hear about it. Um, oh, I know what I was going to ask, Carol. Did you happen to talk to Timberlake about, we were talking about that weekly? Okay, that's fine. Uh, did you? Okay. No, no problem. 
Okay, so <laughs> we started in, Ray and Bryce are, Bryce are back this week, and we started in yesterday. I'm glad that you tripped that into my memory. Um, we started into that yesterday and talked about uh, paperwork. And we came all the way down to we need to do an article in corporation with the state of Minnesota, get that set up. Then we need to go into the 5013C deal to get that all set up. And Ray got to the bottom of all the infrastructures and everything, and it says, if this is quite an undertaking, maybe you should see a lawyer. So, um, I actually think there's a, a lawyer in Chisholm yeah. that, that does, that. does that. So, anyways, my last day of work is Wednesday, and so from there, I am going to try and tackle this. We do have the federal ID number, um, but we don't have anything with the state yet. So there was a lot of stuff in there. If you're filing for this, you don't need this. And it was very hard to navigate. You know how government is to try and find the right article of incorporation, the right spot to go, the whole nine yards. So anyways. Um, we'll try and get that tackled here the next couple days, this next couple weeks. Sandstrom's, yeah, I, I knew you said Sandstrom's, and and we'll have to get hard after that. And yeah, try and, I've got a couple lawyers I'll try and get a hold of and see if they can help us. So, so if there's nothing else, thank you for that, Carol. And thank you for tripping my memory on it, too. I mean, we spent <laughs> a couple hours on it yesterday, and then why I forgot, I don't know. Anyways, we'll go on from there with the last song before the message. Uh, page 439, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <clears throat> the whole thing. The whole thing. So if you don't know the address um, from where Maddie is, it's on here, and I'll hang it up in the back there. Um, that's June 4th, if anybody 
<coughs> is wanting to go. So this week is uh, Mother's Day, and last week, uh, during, towards the beginning of the week, Chris looked at me and said, you better have a Mother's Day sermon. And I've been thinking about it all week. And for me, it's been, it's been very hard to, through the Bible, to, to just pluck out one or uh, even put them together. Because the women of the Bible are, are very, um, there, there's a, only one link there's basically one link through, well, you could say two mothers and then, then God. And, and as we all know, you know, a mother is, is a special, is special, especially to a child. There's no other greater love than a mother for a child. When a child becomes distressed or, or hurt or what have you, the first most of the time, the first thing they do is look for mom. But I do challenge that a little bit. I said there's no greater love for a child than the mother and no greater love for the mother than the child. There's only one exception there. And the one exception is God's love for us. God's love for all his children is more so than a mother's love for their child. And I put it in this per perspective, if God is like, he has the discipline of a father, but the love of a mother. He is the first one there when you, uh, when you trip. He's the first one there when you have a, te uh, uh, a trial, or you are going through something. Because he is always there. He is always, as a believer, he is always beside us. And he always moves through uh, others around us. And I truly believe that that's how he shows us. He shows us through our mothers the love that he has for us. The love and care that the mother has given unto a child is the same that God gives under, unto his children. When you're a believer, his love and his care is as though of a mother. You know, I always say the greatest thing that, um, that I'm waiting to experience is when I get to heaven and he takes me into his arms and holds me and says, well done, my child. And I can only relate that feeling to when you're little and your mother scoops you up and says, I love you. That same feeling is the only place that I can put that, the only compartment my small human mind can put that. That his love is as though of my mother's. So as... As I think about it through the week, I was thinking of <clears throat> mothers and in, in the special bond that they have. I mean, first of all, you think of the individual. I mean, of course, we started with Eve, and, and she was the mother of man, the first. And is there mistakes? And, and even in, our, in a human mother, there's mistakes, but the mistakes grow into faith. For if we do not make mistakes, we do not learn. So from Eve, then we move on, we move on. And the next one I think of, I think of someone that, um, that, you know, she was at a point where she never thought she would be a mother. And we turn over to Genesis chapter 17. And I'm talking of Sarah. You know, Sarah was barren. And she's, you know, 
she thought that she would never bear a child. But we look at uh, chapter 17 of Genesis, and we talk, uh, we find of Abraham, or Abram, and of Sarah. There it was Sarah, but they called her Sarah. She used to be called Sarah. Um, and we drop down in to verse 16. <clears throat> First, we'll, we'll back up to 15, and it says, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name, her name be. Verse 16, and it says, And I will bless her, and I will give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now, you think of this lady that has never been a mother at all, and, and she's well into her years, saying, I, how could this be? But now, to her husband, God said, listen, I will make this woman the, king, uh, the mother of kings of nations. And it says in verse 17, it says, Then Abram fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And Sarah, and Sal, Sarah, Sal, shall Sarah, that is 99 years old, bear. And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear three, thee a son indeed. First, he's thinking, okay, so God must be talking about Ishmael. And that's who he's thinking that will be the mother of his son, the mother of the son of nations, the king. And God said, no. He said, of Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So the lady that had no children is now going to have uh, the lineage of the most important child. And we'll move on to chap, uh, verse 20, and it says, And for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a na great nation. But my covenant I establish with Isaac. So with Ishmael, he is only, he will make him of great nations. But we understand that those nations are the ones that fight against the nations of Israel. They think, those nations that have great with him, think that he is the firstborn, he is the heir, that he should be the heir of God, that only God goes through him. But it is not of his mother, it was of Sarah and Isaac. Isaac is the true, the true inheritant of Abraham. Verse 21, it says, But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at, at this set the time in the next year. And he left uh, and he left off talking with him, and God went up on from uh, Abram. So he left. And, and Abram took his, uh, Ishmael, his son, 
and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abram's house, and circumcised the flesh and the foreskin, and in the same uh, self same day as God had said unto him. So he talked to him and he said, This is how it was. And we go down to 24. It says, And Abram was 90 years old and uh, 90 years old and nine. And when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised. So we moved on into 27, <coughs> or excuse me, 26, and the same. Same, uh, self, same day was Abraham um, circumcised Ishmael and his sons. And Ishmael, his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house, brought with the money, bought with the money of the stranger, were uh, circumcised with him. Um, so now we talk of how, um, how God has blessed her has blessed to Sarah. And, and, and how Abram, the father, is like, how could this be? I have 99, my wife is 90, how could this be? She is bearing no children. How could this be that she will give birth to a son that will be the lineage to the most important son? So let's jump to... Uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 9. And it's, uh, Sarah is promised a son. Verse 9, it says, and, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it, in the tent. She was listening on the tent. And, and this is Abram talking to, with, uh, uh, it says, a heavenly visitor. So he's talking with an angel here. And thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abram and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Where, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? She laughed to herself, but the Lord said unto Abraham, Why does she laugh? And in uh, uh, verse 13, it says, And saying, Shall I of certainty bear a, uh, bear a child, which am, I, am old? Verse 14, And it is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time of appointed, I will return unto thee according to the life, and Sarah shall have a son. It's, it's so much that Sarah is now questioning, how is it that I will be a mother at my age? And the Lord is saying, is there nothing I, I can't do? And he says, I will return to you, unto you, and you will have a son. 15, it says, then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou dost laugh. So even there, I mean, it is, it is something to think of, is, is that she's thinking, I'm too old to have a son. I'm old, too old to be a mother. But yet, the miracle that God has blessed unto her to be the lineage that her son will be the lineage of Christ. That the miracle that God has placed on this woman to become a mother of kings of nations. 
the king of the nations. And carry on the lineage of Abram, who God has said, unto thy seed I will make um, I will make thee great. So I, in this, I, you know, as I said, as I was kind of exploring with all the, the women in the Bible and the mothers in the Bible, I thought of it as, 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 as there is some mothers out there that, that feel they have no hope, but a miracle is put on to them. I know of a young lady that was, um, was going down the wrong path reached out to me and I talked with her many times and and she'd gone through counseling and she'd gone through different things and she did not know how to um, how to save herself and, and she was saved at this point but she'd gone down the wrong path and I said unto her we'd met a couple of times and I said you know the biggest thing you need to do is lean on the Lord and pray. Pray that the Lord gives you something that will help to change your life. And if it wasn't too long after that, she became a mother. And in, so, in doing so, it changed her life. And I'm not saying that all that goes down this path it will be a life-changing uh, for them. But with God, God knows what you need, when you need it, and how you need it. And in this instant, this person needed a child. This child took her from the path that she was going down to a different path. So I think of that. But I not only think of that, I think of mothers, not only in mothers, but in mother-in-laws. If you turn over to Ruth, uh, Ruth chapter 1. Let's see if I can get there before the end of... But if you turn over to Ruth, I talk, it talks of Naomi. And I thought of Naomi as I was reading through. And the reason I thought of Naomi is um, oh my, is because a mother doesn't only have to be uh, a mother doesn't only have to be blood related uh, a mother can also be an in-law or mother can also be one that is part of a family as we have here It's, it's the figure, if you want to put it that way, it's the f uh, figurehead of a mother. Um, <clears throat> the guidance. The mother is not, the, the care, the mother is not only one that, um, that guides, but also the, the love, the, the guidance, the, you know, what they could be, the role model, if you want to say, not only to their own children, to those that are around them. And, it, it, and this, is, this is where I find Ruth, or excuse me, in, in Ruth, find Naomi. So as we know that um, in the day there was a famine, in Judea. Uh, and Emelex is, um, and Naomi, they had two sons. And they traveled from Judea up into Moab. 
from Bethlehem, they went up into Moab. Um, and it says in verse 1, it says, And went and sojourned into the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And as we go through there, we see that the sons, the sons end up marrying two of the uh, two Mo Moabites. <laughs> Easy not for me to say. Um, and as they lived there through the famine, the, the boys took on wives. Um, and the, na the one's name was Oprah, and the other's was Ruth. And they dwelled there for about 10 years. And in that 10 years, both the father and the sons died. And um, I believe the father died first and then the sons died, leaving Oprah and Ruth with Neil. And at a point in time here, if you turn to verse 6, it says, uh, in talking of Naomi, it says, Then she arose with her daughter-in-law that uh, she might return from the country of Moab back to her land, back to her family, back to the family in Bethlehem. And, and, and she sits down with the daughters-in-law and she said, Listen, there is nothing left for me here. The men have passed. I need to go back to my family, for they will take care of me. And Naomi says unto him, I give you free of charge, she said to both to Oprah and to Ruth. Listen, you can go back to your people. I will release you of the of what you um, of what you are to the family. Now, Oprah, she goes back to the family. She goes back to her family of, in Moab. But Ruth says she wants to travel along. Verse 11, it says, And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? And are, ye, uh, are there yet any more sons in my womb? that they may be your husbands. So she's giving them an answer. She's saying, listen, I have no more sons unless I was to bore more sons and you wait till they grow old enough to marry. You may turn away. You may return. Verse 12, it says, turn again, my daughters. Go your way, for I am old. Um, I am too old to have a husband if I should say, I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would ye tarry? She's putting the question to them. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye say for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for, if, uh, for it giveth me much more for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. She's saying, I've been dealt a bad hand. I don't want you to. You return on to your family in Moab. But you can see Naomi as the mother that she is. She is looking forward to the well-being and the guidance because she loves these girls. These two daughters now. Notice she calls them her daughters. It's not daughters-in-law. It's not daughters. It's daughters. Nay, my daughters. For it is me the Lord has gone out against. 14, and it says, And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return there, um, 
return thou after thy sister-in-law. So Oprah had kissed her, left and went on her way back to her family. Ruth said, no, I am staying with you. And it goes down into 16, and, it's, and, and, and you can see the, the love of the mother there from the daughter. It says in 16, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from the following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and there thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. So you can see the mother here not only has the love, but the guidance. And she wants the best for her daughters. She is, they have now, from being wives of her sons to being her daughters, from being daughter-in-laws to daughters. And as you follow in Ruth here, it goes on in, in I don't want to get into it. We're running short of time here, but Ruth goes on and, and they go back to Bethlehem, to the family, and it goes through as, as Ruth takes care of her mother, mother-in-law. She takes care of her. She goes onto the field, and as she's onto the field, the brother of her father-in-law sees that she's there picking corn and wheat, and she, he tells them, listen, leave what falls for Ruth. But then she bring, he brings Ruth onto him. And then, um, um, you know, as far as Boaz, leave onto the ground so that, that both Ruth and Naomi can live. What little bit they could pick off the ground. And as they go through, as more as they go through, um, she becomes more and more involved with God. And now, towards the end of here, it um, to make a long story short, she, she uh, is redeemed in an inheritance of, of, of the family. And, and she becomes, um, you know, in the Bible it says, take care of your widows. And they, in amongst the family, well, let's go into chapter 4 real quick. And it says, uh, verse 1, it says, And Boaz went up to the gate, and he sat him down there. And behold, the kinsmen of whom Boaz spake came by unto him, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one. Turn aside, sit down here, and turn. Uh, and he turned aside and sat down. And he took, the t took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down. And they sat down. And he said unto the king's men, Naomi, that is the one uh, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Emelech, <laughs> Verse 4, and I thought to adv adv uh, advertise the saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. So he's telling them, listen, when they left, they sold this field. They sold this parcel of land. Now, I want us to buy it back and give it back to Naomi. And he said, all of you should do it. And if you all don't do it, I will do it. And that will be the inheritance of Naomi with, on to Ruth. And it goes on in there and it says, uh, By before the inhabitants, before the elders of my people, if thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know that there is, no, uh, there is none to redeem it besides thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. So the love of, of a daughter 
has transformed to the mother-in-law, the love of the daughter-in-law to the mother-in-law, to became the bond of daughter and mother, has come back in the parcel of land. Now, the brother has seen on this that how much Ruth cares for Naomi. And now he wants to redeem it. And he wants to give back the land. Get the land back for Naomi. Um, and, and be an inheritance of Ruth. And as you go further through there, you see that um, it is done. And then um, Ruth finds one in the family, is married, and then she is blessed also with the son of Obadiah. Um, Boaz took Ruth as his wife, and, and Obadiah was born. So you see the guidance and the love that the mother gives unto a child doesn't only have to be one of her own. You could call a mother that has no, has born no children if she is also a mother of those that are around her. It's the same love and the same guidance that she would give unto her own. Whether she has children or not, if she has birth children or not, the mother is still the giving, guiding, loving person. And I know of many that, um, that can proudly carry that name as mother. And I know there's many that um, God would be are as proud that, that he uh, that they are taking care of his children, even if they're not their own birth children, they're still taking care of those children. So with that, let us uh, let's close with prayer, and then we'll move into uh, communion. Dear Heavenly Father, again today we come to visit, to learn of your love. Not only the love that you've given unto us, but the expedient love that, that you've given unto those that are called mother. Whether they be the biological mother or the surrogate mother. The love that they give and the guidance not only uh, to their own children, to those others that are around her. We thank you again, Lord, for all you've done for us. And as I said before, you have the discipline of a father, but the love of a mother. And we thank you, Lord, for the love that you've given unto us with Christ on the cross, that he um, shed his blood on that cross. He died on the cross. He was buried, and he rose again the third day. And us believing that is all we need for the inheritance that you've given unto us. The righteousness of Christ. Because if we were to do it ourselves, we would have to be separated from you for all eternity. But his righteousness, his, his um, life given unto us, is our uh, way into your perfect heaven. And we thank you again, Lord, for that love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So we'll move on to uh, communion. <clears throat> if you want to follow along, it's in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> and we'll start in... Uh, uh, chapter 11, verse 23. And it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had taken, uh, was betrayed, he took bread. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat this, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. 
This do ye in remembrance of me. Verse 25, and it says, After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the cup, uh, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance me. Verse 26, it says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we come to you and thank you for the love you've given unto us. That every time that we drink of the cup of, of life, that we thirst no more. That we eat of the bread of Christ. That we hunger no more. That we live forward for you. For his life was the purchase of our sin. He paid for all of our sin. And we thank you, Lord, for putting him at the point where he could take care of that for us. That his righteousness is now put upon us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Haven of Rest 101, the third verse. this week that I've come up with is from Psalms 51 12 and it says restore unto me the joy of sal thy salvation and uphold me with thy spirit free spirit thank you and have a great week